What is going on, gunfighters? Welcome to Gunfighter Life, the podcast where we talk about guns, gunfighting, tactics, all manner of things. The right way, with God at the center, Judeo-Christian values, and real-world first-hand experience. Today we're going to dive into some minutia, talk about what I think is kind of a forgotten gun manufacturer. Now, if you're really a fanboy of this manufacturer, you may not think so, but I think for a lot of people, it's often overlooked, and that is Walther. I'm going to talk about a couple of their models specifically. They make many other models, but I think they're often forgotten about. First one, we're going to talk about the Walther PDP. The Walther PDP, if you don't know, is a modern striker fired polymer pistol by Walther. I am on their website right now. It is a good good handgun. I have some experience with it. They're very proud of the fact they say that it won the handgun of the year in 2021. Industry Choice Award, which doesn't really mean much to me, but Here's what is important to me, I've known from dealing with these guns, they have a really good trigger. It rivals, I'd say, any of the polymer striker fire triggers out of the box. If you're talking just an out of the box gun, the Walther PDP has a beautiful, beautiful trigger for a striker fire. It's not a 1911, it's not going to be a 1911, right? You're not going to make your Honda Civic a Ferrari or your Toyota Tracel, a McLaren, or whatever analogy you want to use. You're not going to make an out-of-the-box striker-fired handgun trigger equal to a good single-action only hammer-fired gun. Just, it doesn't work that way it, it, that I've ever experienced. You can customize them and get them pretty close, but then you're comparing apples to oranges. You're comparing an aftermarket customized trigger to an out-of-the-box like single action only hammer fire trigger but for a hammer fire trigger boy that Walther PDP really brings it to the table it's a good one they call it their performance duty trigger I think this is mainly kind of its push is that it's a duty handgun meaning it's like rugged it's a duty built handgun Although I'm not aware of any departments actually issuing the Walther PDP, it's a good gun, and it certainly would do fine for that, I think. I'm not aware of any issues. It's been out a while now. It's getting up to kind of that three-year mark as to when they became readily available. I don't know when it was actually released, but they've been around a few years now. They're getting to that three-year mark you've heard me talk about before. When a new handgun is released, I'm not the guy that wants to run out and get it because this is gunfighter life. This is not gun reviewer life this is not gun youtuber look at my cool new gun that they're paying me to tell you how awesome it is you should go out and spend your money on it channel this is gunfighter life if you're getting a gun for gunfighting for personal protection defense you shouldn't be a beta tester in that you should get a proven reliable design my general go-to rule for that is three years if it has kinks if it has issues and many of the big manufacturers probably all of them at some point do Ruger, Smith & Wesson, even Glock, from time to time, they'll release a crap model that has issues that have to be fixed. You don't want to be finding that out if that's your go-to defensive gun or one of your go-to defensive guns. But this Walther's coming up to that point where it doesn't seem to really have any issues that I'm aware of. As far as reliability, functionality, it's getting to that point. Going down their list of features on the website. Super terrain serrations. That's what they call them. I'm just going to call them really big serrations. Now I'm going to be honest. I really don't like the looks of this handgun. I actually like the looks of the bottom. If you could take the top off the top to me, the serrations on the top, they just, the gun looks really big and heavy. It's not. It's not a heavy gun. It looks really big and clunky. I don't particularly like the way that it looks, which kind of turned me off to it. But when I actually held one and handled one, pulled the trigger on one, they're a good gun. 
That said, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. There's probably somebody out there that thinks that a Glock looks better than a 1911. I'm not telling you can't like the way this gun looks. I'm just telling you I don't particularly like the way that it looks. That's not a good reason to not like the gun. Just like spider cone knives. There are a few spider cone knives I think are attractive, but the vast majority of the classic looking spider co folding knives, I just think they're butt ugly. That's just me. Lots of people like them, and they're good knives. So, again, I think the top of this gun is a little homely looking. The bottom of it is a good looking gun. The ergonomics are fantastic. Talking about those, whatever they call them, I'm just going to call them really big aggressive serrations on the slide. They're well done as far as functionality goes. The Walther, what do they call it? Their performance duty grip texture. It's a really good grip texture. It kind of reminds me of like reptile scales. It's a really, really good and well done. I actually really like the texture on that. It, I think they did a really good job of balancing, you know, the amount of texture on there and the functionality of it, the ergonomics, they're really good. Red dot ready. And I think this is a big deal, especially in 2023 or whenever you listen to this. I think even if you're not planning on putting a red dot, it makes sense to just get a gun that's capable of mounting a red dot nowadays. And I like, I'm a fan of red dots. Took me a while to warm up to them, but I'm a fan of them. Good, well-made rugged optics but here's the thing your no matter how rugged your optic is on your handgun if the mounting system to actually mount it to the gun is not good then that's your weak link kind of like on a rifle and a and an optical sight a scope on a rifle you could have several thousand dollar rifle on a seven several thousand dollar optic if you got crap mounts your rifle's not going to shoot well you're going to have It's either going to break, you're going to have possibly shifting point of aim, point of impact. You're going to drop it, it's going to lose its point of aim. All those potential problems. You need a rock solid mounting system. I think a lot of people really overlook that. And we're still kind of in this beta testing phase, I think, of optics mounting on handguns. There's a lot of different companies and a lot of different optics with a lot of different mounting solutions. Some are way better than others. For example, Glock, I think, did a they kind of did of how can we also mount an optic on our gun kind of how can we do as little as possible and say that you can mount an optic on a glock i've done quite a bit of optics mounting i'm not a fan of their system i don't think it's super robust getting back to the walther pdp i think it's a a decent system it's one of the better ones that i've seen i would put it up there with the sig maybe not as high as the canic like the canic rival to be fair, I think has one of the best optic mounting systems, period. But the Walther is pretty good. I I wouldn't hesitate to get one and put an optic on it. Because if I were getting a Glock, I would want to actually just get a regular model Glock and have it cut into a convertible and have a direct mounting. I wouldn't really trust their mounting system if it was for a fighting gun. If it was for a competition gun or a fun gun, that's fine. But for a a gun fighting gun, I don't particularly trust the Glock mounting system. I would want something more robust. This Walther system, I think I would trust it as far as mounting an optical sight. As far as the actual design and function of the gun, there's really not a lot revolutionary to it. It's a very simple like browning, tilting barrel design, recoil spring, you know, it's, it's again, nothing revolutionary there. They have several different sub-models of the PDP. The Compact, which a lot of people might gravitate towards for concealed carry, 15-round capacity, 4-inch barrel. This is going to be your Glock 19-ish size. It won't be exact, but if you're trying to think of something to compare it to, the Glock 19 is the obvious choice. And again, they look kind of big and clunky. Like if you saw it in the case, you might think that it was big and clunky, but it's not. It's not heavy at all. It weighs 21 ounces. 21.4 or 24.4 for the compact model. That's that's not bad. Going to the Glock website, they say the Glock 19 weighs... 
23.16 or 23.63, depending on whether you have a magazine in it or not. So there you go. Pretty comparable. They make what they would call the 4-inch full-size, which I would not call a full-size, but it just takes a larger magazine, 18 rounds. They have the 4.5-inch full-size. And they have, here's what I think is really cool, that I don't see a lot of other manufacturers doing. In fact, I kind of see them doing the opposite. But they have the PDP Compact 5-inch. So if you want the full-length upper, with a compact grip. And why might you want that? Well, if you carry strong side belt, which I do, and I would encourage most people to, unless you have a reason otherwise, it's usually the grip that makes it less concealable because the handgun is oriented with the barrel pointed down. So does it really matter? And you get a lot of advantages from a long barrel. You get the extra velocity, even for the same exact round out of the same box of ammunition. If you take, let's say, 100 and 24 grain spear gold dot, pretty standard load. And you load that in a four inch gun and a five inch gun, you're gonna get more velocity, more power out of the exact same box of ammunition out of the five inch gun. You're also gonna get a longer sight radius. You're gonna have more real estate to clear malfunctions. There's a lot of advantage to having those longer handguns. So if you wanted that and you wanted the short grip, I think that's awesome. I I, it baffled me when Glock came out with their 19X because they kind of did the opposite of that. They give you a big long grip and a short, shorter barrel and slide. I'm not saying that's a bad gun. I'm saying for the way that I carry and the way that a lot of people carry, it's kind of the opposite of what I would want. We see Walther here with the PDP Compact 5 inch. So you get that full, I would consider a full size gun, a 5 inch or so barrel. A good 5 inch barrel with a compact grip. 15 rounds still, so plenty of rounds there. 15 rounds, I imagine it would take the longer mags if you wanted it to, but that's pretty cool. And they make the five inch full size, which would be the five inch with the 18 round magazines. Also looks like they make some pro models with a threaded barrel and looks like a different trigger which is hopefully even better than the already good trigger and a magazine well so if you wanted a decent out of the box option for like carry optics division well i guess here here is the thing about the walther pdp it's another polymer striker fired handgun and i think it came into a market that's already flooded with polymer striker fired handguns does it have some real advantages over kind of the standard Glock? I'd say, yeah, it does. It has a better mounting system and has better ergonomics. It has a better trigger. But again, so do many other ones that were already out and established before it. Does it have a better trigger than a 320 or an M17? Uh, I, I honestly would have to have them both side by side next to me right now and, you know, do a blindfolded dry fire. But let's just say they're they're that close. It's a good gun. But it's not as common. So you're going to run into the issues of magazines, magazine compatibility, availability, availability of parts if you ever do break apart. And if you shoot a gun hard enough, long enough, you know, it's a mechanical thing. It's likely to break. If you're willing to deal with that for the ergonomics, for the uniqueness of the gun, because it offers something just better that you like that it just works for you better. It's a good gun. I think it's often forgotten about. So I thought I'd do an episode on it. I figured it was worth talking about. It's getting up to that that time again. It's getting up to about the point where I'd say, yeah, it's a pretty proven design. I don't think a lot of departments are going to be jettisoning their Glocks or their 320s or whatever they are to mass adopt the walther pdp but that doesn't make it a bad gun i think it's been around long enough it's proven walther's a decent company i think it's a good option and maybe you didn't know much about it and maybe now you know a little bit more about it anyway if you like this podcast for a gun channel that's not just another commercial telling you that you should buy this new hot thing and 
me taking bribes to tell you how good something is or is not. I try and give you a fair and honest, sober look at things. If you appreciate that, this podcast is supported by patrons. If you want to become a patron, they get some pretty cool insider content or early commercial free content. They also, if they want to be part of an insider chat with me, we chat all the time, usually except for Sabbath, pretty much every day. Sabbath, I rest as we all should. We talk about just random stuff on there all the time. Knives, guns, more important stuff like deep theology. Anyway, if you want to become a patron, consider becoming a patron. With that, the tactical tip of the day. Different 9mm loads will likely recoil differently for you and depending on the handgun. I would encourage you not to just go to whatever store it is and just say, oh, they've got this 115 grain white box and some other color on sale. I'm going to buy a bunch of it. Not what I would advise for a gunfighter for a serious shooter. I would say buy a box of the common grain weights, common loadings like 115 grain, 124 grain, 147 grain. And I would actually take them out with your go-to fighting handgun and actually see which recoil impulse you prefer. I personally, for many reasons, prefer a 147. Now, if I am if I just get a really good deal on some really cheap ammo and I'm practicing, let's say, my draw and shooting at close contact CQB distances, I'm going to tell you, just practice with whatever. If I'm usually doing legit practice, I'm going to practice with 147s. I like both the Spear Gold Dots and the CCI Blazer 147s. They both shoot really well for me. They shoot point of aim, point of impact in my guns. I like the recoil impulse, that kind of slow roll rather than the snap of the 115. But there's plenty of people who prefer other grains. You should know that. You shouldn't just be like, oh, well, this is here. It's in a bulk 100 pack, so I'm going to buy it. And next time I'm going to buy a different thing and expect them to shoot in the same place and expect for my cadence on a bill drill to be the same. I'd say buy a box of each, or if you already have a box of each, 115, 124, 147. Next time you go to the range, do a similar drill or a couple of similar drills with all three. Do a ragged hole drill with all three. Do a bill drill with all three. Do a plate rack with all three. See which one you prefer instead of just whichever one you get. Just like I would encourage you to have kind of a stricter diet, not just eat everything thrown in front of you. Like that's what swine do. Think about that for your gun too. Your gun should be good and reliable and handle different kinds of ammo, but it should have its preferred diet. You should have that preferred diet with that gun and that ammo. And with that, your tactical tip of the day, your tactical verse of the day. You shall not go... Well, let's do the King James since it's beautiful in its language. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. Don't spread rumors. Don't spread slander. Be honest in your judgments and your dealings. Whether it's for good or bad, don't be like, oh, this is the cool new gun, the the guy that I really like on whatever says it's great because he got paid a bunch of money or this is a new hot thing and look at the cool Cerakote. It's the best gun. You got to have it. Also, don't crap on a gun or a gun design just because it's popular to crap on. Now, we all have our own biases from training and experience. I certainly do. For instance, you'll probably deduce that I'm not the biggest fan of Glock, but there's some things they do really, really well, and I'll own up to that, and I'll admit that. They're super reliable. They're super simple. They have really, really good quality control year after year, decade after decade. Because if you're talking about actual gunfighting, protecting your fellow man, your life and your fellow man's life, loving your neighbor as yourself, what Jesus says is the second command. It should be based on reality. It should be based on what's actually good and what's not good, not what's popular and what's unpopular. Don't go up and down as a talebearer among your people. With that, thanks for listening, and have a blessed day.